So last week, I answered one of those questions that I get all the time. And today, we're gonna to talk about the second question. Can you seriously tap trees and make syrup if you don't live in the Maple Belt? The answer might surprise you. I have talked to folks across the nation and literally around the world who are successfully tapping trees in areas you would never expect. And the real secret to that is to, instead of the habit of watching the thermometer to know if it's time to tap your trees, start watching the barometer. Even if you live in a place that doesn't typically have the right weather, for syrup making, if you have crazy changes in barometric pressure, that is going to lead your trees to start sending out the sap. And that's when you can make syrup. I have talked to folks across the nation and literally around the world who are successfully tapping trees in areas you would never expect. And the real secret to that is to instead of the habit of watching the thermometer to know if it's time to tap your trees, start watching the barometer. Even if you live in a place that doesn't typically have the right weather for syrup making, if you have crazy changes in barometric pressure, that is going to lead your trees to start sending out the sap. And that's when you can make syrup. Think about it. What makes sugar making even possible? Well, first of all, you all know that trees do this amazing thing called photosynthesis, and they all summer long work at making sugar. And then when the fall comes, the same time that around our homestead we are filling up our barn with hay, we're putting away food for the winter, the tree is doing the exact same thing. You see, the tree has these amazing enzymes. I don't understand the science behind it, but these enzymes are brilliant. And they see the signs of fall and winter coming, and they start turning the sugar into starch. And then they store that starch in the inner bark of the tree. So those brilliant enzymes in the trees, when it starts showing signs of spring, they start converting that starch back to sugar and the tree combines that sugar with the water that it's been taking up through its roots come springtime, and all of a sudden the sap is flowing. But you see, if there's a barometric pressure, like crazy changes in the weather, the enzymes don't know the difference, and the tree is going to be producing lots of sap. So, yes, as long as you're using your barometer instead of your thermometer, no matter where you live in the world, there might be a day or two, if not more, that you can be collecting sap. You do have to watch it closely because obviously you have a short window in a lot of parts of the world. Um, but if you don't have enough trees to actually make syrup, depending on where you live and how long your window is, you might not. You might just have, I don't know, maybe you only collect a gallon worth of sap. Here's the deal. I still highly recommend that you do it because that sap is amazing to drink. I'm going to leave a link, I'll put it here, and I will also put it in the show notes, explaining all the science behind why, if you can collect even just a jar worth of sap, why you should be collecting it and drinking it. So no matter where you live in the world, check out the other video that I will leave. Also, I'll leave a link here and in the show notes to the 30 trees that you can tap. If you have access to one of those trees, watch your barometric pressure, watch the changes in your weather, and if you have even a small window of time that the trees are sending out all this sap, then tap and go for it and enjoy the wonders of sugar making no matter where you live. Okay, I came inside because it is actually colder than it looks out there. Um, so to finish up what I was saying, I have talked to folks 
in Tennessee, actually the Tipton Haynes Historical House. I'll leave a link for them in the show notes. They are doing a really cool thing down in Tennessee. First of all, they just have this really neat restored house and they're teaching history of all kinds. But every spring in Tennessee, they successfully tap their trees and make amazing syrup. They have a big festival and folks in Tennessee who have never seen this done can come and be part of syrup making. There are people in Virginia and West Virginia that have really gotten excited. They're forming large groups and having um, conferences every year and they are learning how to successfully be sugar makers. They have a smaller window than we do in New England, but that's okay. They can still make amazing syrup. And there is a group called the Sap Suckers out in the Pacific Northwest. I've talked to a few of the folks in that group. They are really fun, diehard, committed to successfully sugar making in the Pacific Northwest where people typically think you can't do it. But it's crazy. You know, Native Americans have been making maple syrup for thousands of years across the country. It's nothing new. We just have got it stuck in our heads that you have to be in the maple belt. And that's probably because we are so concerned as a society about, um, oh, what's the word I want to use? we don't want to waste time and we're so concerned about everything being as productive as possible. Well, let's face it. Sugar making is not all about productivity. Sugar making is about an amazing experience and it's about amazing all natural sugar, like nothing else in nature. So it's not always going to be the most productive, but if you are able to find one of those 30 tappable trees and you're able to watch that barometric pressure and not rely on the thermometer and what your temperature is where you live, but watch for those drastic weather changes, you very well might be a sugar maker when you never thought you could be. Now, if you do want to know more about tapping, definitely check out my book. If you go to solelyrested.com order, there are coupons and bonuses that come with every purchase of my book valued way more than what you've invested in purchasing the book. And this is pretty much like an encyclopedia on sugar making. I spent years and years pouring everything into this book that you could possibly want to know about how to tap trees and make syrup. So check it out. I'll leave a link for that as well. And leave questions, say hi in the comments. If you would like to support our little sugar bush, and help me with education efforts across the country, then there's two simple things you can do. First of all, the easiest thing, please subscribe and hit the bell when I have future content. I will be sure to let you know so you won't miss anything. And check out my new swag. I'll leave a link in the show notes. This is just one of my favorite current options, but there'll be different options available. And like I said, it's all supporting educational purposes to help people understand how amazing all natural sugar is and how everybody can access it. I hope everything's fantastic in your neck of the woods.